Okay. We are just wrapping up, changing the valve springs on this motor before it goes back in. This is a used LS1 out of a 01 to 04 Corvette. Uh, we're using it to replace a blown engine out of a 98 Corvette. Uh, this LS1 is is newer. It, it's got different valve covers and a couple other small things that have, have been changed. Um, but really what we're trying to do is we're trying to change his camshaft. He had a stage three uh, Saturday Night Special camshaft in his old motor before it failed and there's nothing wrong with the cam or the valve train. Uh, his bottom end let go. So we're gonna take his cam out. We've already put the cam in. We've changed uh, the cam bearings with some nice uh, Teflon coated stuff. And now we're changing uh, we're changing all the valve springs and the valve seats and we're changing the valve stem seals because we have to pull them off to change the valve seats. This motor is uh, was pretty low mileage or so it claimed uh, the valve seals probably would have been all right, but the new valve springs that go with the stage three cam are uh, double springs. They have more of the surface area on the bottom. Uh, these are the regular beehive valve springs, just one spring and that's it for the stock. And so we have to change the valve seats. These are the old valve seats that sit right on the aluminum head to go with the beehive spring. There's just enough uh, surface area for the one spring that rides on it. But when we upgrade to the stage three cam, we need uh, a seat that's more flat across the whole board, like a washer that'll handle the inside spring as well. And uh, that's what we're wrapping up right now. We've actually already done uh, 14 of them. We're on spring number 15. In fact, here's the seat we got to throw down there. And then uh, we have this little protective sleeve. This protective sleeve goes down over the valve stem and it protects this, the, the valve stem seal. from getting hurt by the notch in the valve stem for the keepers. Ooh, this keeps down nice and easy. And it's like that. And once it's down, I got this awesome little socket, 9 16 deep with a half inch of reducer or depth up top. And we just push down straight and it goes right down and that's it. And then we'll pull this piece back up put that on and now we're ready for the valve spring. The valve spring goes on. Uh, we'll re this and then we'll put this in. And we'll put in keepers. One keeper. That's it for 15, and now we're on the very last cylinder, our very last valve, which is cylinder seven exhaust. On the other motor, it was the connecting rods bent up a little bit, and the pistons were showing a lot of detonation. So when all this goes back together. We're gonna to get to uh, correct the tune along the way so that this motor might uh, <laughs> might not come apart like the last one did. That's, uh, these early LS engines had really scrawny, weak connecting rods to begin with. If you're uh, trying to make power with an LS engine, you're uh, you're better off with anything Gen 4, LS2, LS3, LS uh, anything that's after like 05 or 06, when GM had switched to the bigger, beefier dimple rods. On this, the motor that was in here looked like it was running over advanced ignition timing for a while. Whoops. And, uh, oh my gosh, those rods are wiped out so bad. Okay, there's the old bow seat. Here's the very last new bow seat. Rod not new. The SNS valve seat and the last valve stem seal. There's two different color valve stem seals. There's uh, these browns and then there's blacks. Where are the blacks? These are black ones. Brown and black. 
The black ones are going on the intakes and the brown ones are going on the exhaust valves. And this is our sleeve. Last time it was sleeve. Gosh. And I put some oil on it so it just slides down nice. And then the 916th deep. Just like that. That's it. Pull this back up. Put the last double valve spring on. Boom. Put the thing, we articulate this. Get these two keepers back in there. Here is one. And here's keeper two. Now we can disconnect the shop air. Let it go quiet. And uh man, it's nice without that noise, isn't it? Yes. And, uh, and now these can go, can go back on. We have, uh, we've already set up the rocker arms on the other side uh, to go along with the stage three cam. This guy is also has trunnions, bad to the bone. So we'll put his trunnions back on for him over here. Uh, we also have different push rods these push rods they're both stock LS ones with that have never been opened so we'll assume they're all right and we roll the motor and everything feels all right so I'm sure we'll all right. we didn't have any evidence of the piston and the valve doing the touchy touchy thing so I'm sure we're okay these push rods are 7.35 these are the trunnions. I personally like the needle rollers better. I think the needle rollers have less friction and I think they're better, but everybody loves these trunnions, so I got nothing bad to say about it. Uh, the trunnions go on, they just all bolt right down. Everybody has their own way of liking to set stuff up, right? I, uh, I like to get them running pretty much close to zero lash or just get them in running kind of loose and then roll the motor a little bit as I uh, as I roll them around and let them find center and, uh, and then I come back and I torque them down we torque these to 22 foot pounds and it's very important before we start torquing them down that we make sure that their holes their threaded holes are clear and free and not full of oil if there's a lot of oil or coolant or anything inside of those holes when we go to torque these bolts down that fluid won't compress and maybe the we'll use the bolt to just peel the threads out of that hole in the head and once you peel the threads out of that head like uh that head's fucking junk i'm, I'm sorry it is but uh helicoils don't really hold it that much and to hog it out and put a nut cert in it is uh, or a time cert is uh is a thing I'm sure uh, a lot of people do fix that, but I don't. All right, so look, you see this? You see the way this, this one is uh, off a little bit? It's not like totally centered out. Rather than uh, letting the, uh, the spring, or rather than letting the metal find its own way and grind its shit to straight, I'll get them tight to where there's a little bit of drag on the bolt, and then I'll roll the motor. And as I roll the motor, the rocker arms will usually find their own way to center. And in my mind, it's just more of a friendly way. It's easier than trying to hold them steady as you're running them all down. But also, it's, uh, it just lets you know that everything is in a positive way.
very important that these get torqued to, a, to their correct spec to 22 foot pounds. No more, no less. Once the threads get hurt on the rocker arms, it's wrecked. And I'll tell you something else. If we care about preload on the rocker arm and making sure that we're not gonna have a noisy valve train, Hold on. Ah, the air compressor. Oh. We prefer silence. Yeah, okay. Oh. If we care about our LS engine not having a noisy valve train, uh, for preload, with the old small blocks, it was one quarter to three quarters from zero latch when you were setting your rocker arm arms. Uh, so you would run your fulcrum down until your rod stopped spinning. You'd be spinning your uh, your push rod with your finger while you're tightening your nut. And as soon as you feel the push rod stop spinning, from there you go one quarter to three quarters of a turn, and that is your preload. The distance of this preload is actually dictated by the thread pitch of the bolt that you're turning that, that fulcrum nut on. The thread pitch is different for LS because they're metric, but also they're a finer thread. So with the LS, you actually get one and a quarter to one and a half turns of preload. So as you're tightening it up, you should feel the lifter start to compress while well, you still have one to one and a quarter more turn left to go. And as long as you feel that, and you feel it starting to compress and you get a whole turn and then it, it tor hits torque, you know you're gonna have a good quiet valve train on your LS that's not gonna make noise. Uh, if you're tightening them up and you're not hitting any amount of drag at all, then uh, you know, you're, you're probably gonna make a lot of noise. And, uh, make sure we're all right. set up loosely. Sorry, set to 22 foot pounds because we just did this other bank. And now we'll do these. three cam and valve train set up in this motor. It's all nice and quiet. It spins pretty nice and freely. From here, we just got to put the uh, oil pump back on, get the front, the front cover on, get this thing on a stand, get the oil pan on it. And then uh, we got to get our valve cover situated and then it's ready to go back in the car. We got to put the clutch back on it. Uh, we're hoping to deliver this before the weekend if we can. That's a tall order because we still got to tune it too. Uh, that's all for now. Uh, it's getting kind of late. We should wrap it up and go home. So we got to uh, get this wrapped up tomorrow morning. Second ship performance.